Hope you guys are enjoying the co-pilot today, Nicole Jurgens, who I think I've commentated my most shows with you, actually. Probably. I mean, I think your very first show. Oh, wow. Aces versus Kings in this hand. Wow. Okay, we're going to let you guys hear a lot of the table talk, and if there is any. Dan's. This is just going to go all in pre-flop, I believe, because JD's going to put in the four bet. And JD only started the hand with a hunt. This is a straddle pot, Nicole. So JD started this hand with something effectively like 65 big blinds. And here right. comes the four bet and the five bets come in. And, and again, and speaking of metagame, you know, the, the big hand in quotes, you know, relative uh, big hand, the last big hand that JD played, it was against Dan, and JD did make the call that he later was upset about. So now oh, yeah. Dan thinks he's got him in a spot oh. here, and it's, you know, the hand's going to play out itself, but especially considering the fact that uh, the position JD was in in the last hand. And JD is going to oh, ship wow. a $27,450 pot with the ultimate cooler aces versus kings, number one. This is number two. Classic. Ace Kings. Exactly, Julie Yarn. We had almost the whole crew yesterday. Oh, here comes Ken. Hey, Julie. And Ken, who showed up a little late. Ken Hartano. Ken is an action player, Nicole, but a very big thinking player. He can. I've seen him play very solid. But if he wants to give action and bluff, he can put people to the test like no other. So this should be the special ingredient to our lineup today to make these players play a little wild. I said as Andy's sitting there running computations through the last three hands and all that in his brain. <laughs> Andy's brain is his own HUD. That's what I like about live poker, though, is that is that your brain is meant to be. I think I I'm definitely not the mathematical play twenty games at one time and have a HUD and look at the stats. It, it takes a lot of the fun of uh, poker away from me. And and I'm just not good at it, so I guess it's probably why it's not fun either. Limp pot here. Probably won't see too many of these today. Ken does limp the cutoff. John checked two pairs. Um, me, 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 me. Yeah. I'm assuming we're going to see a check raise, and he's going to hope that JD so has an ace, which he does not. No, I've never looked at Hong Have you used Hong Kong? My family has plays, but I don't live there. You know, JD LA, going New York. for something. And look at JD go. No? JD is thinking he has a three in his hand. And it's a limp pot, so he's going to rep three deuce for the straight. The good thing about this board, too, is it's, well, I guess there is two spades, so that's one thing John can consider. You know, does this guy just have one pair in spades? Does he have ace high spades? I was going to say the good thing was that, that there are four different suits. Um, in that situation, I think it would make it uh, almost harder for, for John to call here. I still think it's very hard for Johnson to call here. This is a spot that's very rarely under bluffed. A three bet pot on the turn is almost always what JD is trying to represent, which is a straight. So definitely not an easy spot because remember, Johnson still loses to bigger two pairs like ace four and ace five, maybe even a set of fours here. So, and all the straights from the third line with three deuce. So that's a lot of combos, 16 combos alone of three deuce. So let's see how Johnson works his white magic. This just goes to accentuate how important position is in this game. In case you ever doubted it, two pair here really considering continuing. He does call. I keep trying to get him to come to me, but he's not and I love this graphic here with Johnson in the top right corner and action on JD. 
JD Fearless, we've seen it this Friday in the Friday Pass. Check for Johnson. White Magic is working. It looks like a snap from JD, and let's see what Johnson's going to read this $3,700 bet of. In a smaller game, you'd often say, well, maybe I would check back here because I actually hit a jack. Is it possible to be good? But you know in this situation that there's no way a jack could possibly be good. Uh, the only thing I still continue to think about for John that could possibly make this easier for him to call if he does is that a spade's bricked out. If a spade came on this river... I felt like it'd be much higher percentage of time that JD can get John to fold here. Let's see if he can do it without the spade. There's only so many places you can go. Yeah. Living there for a year, I was so used to just like, you know. What do y'all think in the chat? One call, two folds, too late. John Sin's going to make the call, and what an amazing call. That was definitely not an easy call, even though it looks like two pair, yes. What is that? But Johnson was definitely playing against the player there and probably rewatched some of the shows that they played against each other. No, I take lessons from it. Smash it. What? Smash it. Smash what? Button. Please hit the subscribe button or when Nicole just said smash it. I said crush it. I said oh, thrash it. Thrash it. Like the smash YouTubers. It. Crush it, thrash it, smash it. How do they say it in your kids' uh, YouTube channels? That they, they, they say it just like that. They say smash it. They say smash that like button. And I always laugh. I'm like, oh, these YouTubers are so cute. And then I heard you say it. I'm like, oh, look at that. We're YouTubers now. <laughs> um. How do you say it for your podcast? You know, that's the funny thing is like you we're, just have we're terrible podcasters. Like we rarely remember to even ask people oh, to subscribe. You have to. I know it's so bad. We're we're terrible. We're learning. If they like you, well, we'll get back to that. Double M with the nut flush here, and John Sin with top pair and queen of hearts in his hand is going to lose oh. a few bets at least here and John puts in the C bet double M playing this one very sneaky and going to balance his range which is very important Nicole in high stake games versus thinking opponents if you're playing against a guy who doesn't know how to read the board fine just keep betting your hand and check raising your hand but against these players that play against each other almost every Friday you want to be balancing your hands you want to be balancing your checks with some strong hands or players know when you check they can just bet at will and you just always have weak hands and here John is going to go for a double barrel for protection and also with the queen of hearts and let's see if Double M continues his balance strategy or he puts in a check raise and he continues to just call here, keeping his range pretty wide. And a quick check here from Double M. Continuing the rope a dope. See if John fall for it. I did notice Double M re look at his hand, recheck his hand after John bet the turn. And look at what he's doing here, Nicole. He's looking directly at John Sin. It's meaning like, don't bet. Usually that's like a reverse now. So he's reversing this one. Because usually when someone's looking straight at you, they don't want you to bet. But he's definitely reversed this. Well done by Double M here. And John Sin, who's going for a thin value bet, is going to get check raised. And we're going to see John Sin throw it away. And I, let's see what sizing Double M. I'm assuming he's just going to say all in and hope that he's cooler Johnson. <laughs> Maybe they do, but they don't have a sense of personality, so I think that's good. Right, right. And, you know, you want to maintain that. There's the board run out. And I heard raised Nicole. I'm not sure the size. And it is an all in sizing. But once you start doing that, then it, start, then it becomes. I would say Johnson's going to fold this one pretty easily, but we will see. He does have a queen blocker. I don't know how important that is here, though. I'm 
Double M is repping a very strong hand with this check raise. Would Double M ever just do this with just the ace of hearts? If the answer is yes, then Johnson has to call here. Is Double M doing this? Well, I'm not is, sure. Is Double M doing this with anything other than hearts? Is he capable of that? I mean, that's another question that's going through John's head. <laughs> Look at Johnson. Look for some sort of towel. It looks like he's looking at his pulse in his neck. Going for a live read here in a tough spot here. What do you guys think in the chat? One call, two fold. I think Johnson's going to make the fold. I'm going to put a two in the chat. But I don't want. I should let them figure it out first, right? Before I give my reaction, because then I kind of kind of led them to put a two now. But one call, two fold. I'm going to put a two in the chat. Cole, what do you think? I think he looks like he looks like oh, he's gonna he call. Yeah, call. He, he looked like he, and and I think uh, Double M got him with the the continual check back of his hand. He kept looking back, and I think you're right about that hard stare, JJ. That hard stare makes it feel like he really doesn't have it, and I don't want you to bet. Um, I, I think he got him with the the, the, the mental yeah. game. Got him, I think. Yeah.